Hey everybody and welcome back to the Fern Fam Van Build Series, where our goal is to give you the skills and the confidence you need to build your home on wheels. I'm Carver. And I'm Lauren. And these are our pups. They're a little out of the frame today. There's Sawyer. The summit popped up to say hello. And today we're going to talk to you about how we built our shower. And more importantly, why we personally felt why we need a shower. So we've been on several trips now, um, before we even had the van, where we totally just, I would say, winged it. And <laughs> we got a rental car and lived out of that. Didn't realize there would be no showers um, at some of the campsites we stayed at, if we even got a campsite that night. And when you're disgusting like that for, what, a week? A little over yeah. a week, actually. Like um, hiking like... 10 and 12 miles every day and it's not like super cold so we were sweating a good bit and just kind of got pretty gross yeah so we slept on complete opposite sides of the car didn't touch each <laughs> other didn't even sleep in our sleeping bags i mean everything was just nasty yeah. and if, if the dogs had been with us i don't think they would have slept in the same room Yes, so that's one reason they love being up on our bed, even though they have their own bed below us. We definitely don't want to gross them out of our bed, because we like their company, don't we? And nothing beats a shower in your van. It has its own struggles, obviously you can't hang out in there for 20 minutes. Like I would say many females would, honestly. Even he does it in the mornings if we're in an apartment or in a hotel. but. Being able to come in and just get the sweat and dirt and sand if you're on the coast off of you is unbeatable. And we've seen so many awesome designs of showers that are, I mean, hidden. But to him, he didn't want to set it up every day. So we have an actual wet bath in our van that stays that way all the time, ready to go. Yeah. And that's one thing, like, even our bed, we have a fixed bed. Because who wants to set up a bed when you're tired and ready to go to bed? Like just things that we really didn't want in our van, things that you have to set up. So our shower is set up all the time, our bed's set up all the time, everything's set up all the time and ready to rock and roll. Yes, so props for everyone that, you know, their stuff changes out, it does so many cool things. It really is awesome, we would agree, but we're lazy, so. Pretty much. <laughs> so a little bit about how this video is going to go. While we were doing the van, we uh, took time-lapse footage of pretty much everything that we did. And so we're going to use that to go into great detail about every step that we did. And also included in this video, there are two sections where I'm holding the camera, just kind of talking through everything that I'm doing during that step. And now another interesting thing about this video is it encompasses the entire shower build. So you're going to see this van bare, just spray foam and a floor in it, which is uh, kind of cool. And if you're interested in checking out some of the other videos that show how we transform the van into what you see here, definitely check those out as well. You can find them on our channel. Alright guys, so here's where we get into the details. What we're doing here is basically trying to find the center line of the van so we know where we're going to need to have our framing and basically how to get it square. So one thing that's difficult in a van is making walls straight up and down because you can't just put a level on it and make it level because the van itself may not be level. As you can see on our driveway here, the van was probably at like a 15 degree angle for the entire build. So what I did was ran a tape measure across in a couple different locations and marked it. And then you can see the line of string that I'm pulling down the middle there. And that's basically going to be the center line on the floor. And now the next step will be to repeat the process but on the roof of the van. And that will give us a center line on the roof. So basically you can measure from center line to the shower and that will give us a location that makes it where the walls are actually square inside of the van that we're building. So that's, that's a very important step in a van build. I use this uh, method to center the cabinets, to center the bed, basically anything in the van that needed to be square or look, look square in the van, I use this method. Uh, even when I was framing, I uh, had a similar deal to get the uh, 
openings for the fan and the AC centered in the roof. So now we're adding an extra piece of support in the roof area to basically give me something to tie the framing into for the shower. So there are basically, I guess, ceiling joists running across the ceiling that I screwed into the metal of the van. Uh, if you'd like a more in-depth look on how this van is framed, we've got a whole video dedicated to that. I think it's episode 10 if you want to check it out. Um, but we're adding that piece in the top to basically give us another place to tie the top of the shower into because it only intersected with one of the cross members or ceiling joists going across the, the van. And so trying to figure out how I want to do the uprights. Basically you saw I had the shower pan sitting in there so I kind of knew where they needed to be. And then the little piece down on the floor, that's just a guide piece for how thick the wall is going to be that's going to attach to the studs. Another thing you'll notice is I've got the stud turned sideways so it's not the way you traditionally build a wall in a house. This was to save space, and we're definitely going to touch on that more later. So here's the, the first run of the shower pan uh, frame that goes around the bottom. And as you can see, the shower pan does not fit. So I had to go in, and you can kind of see it here. I took the router and routed out a little groove for the shower pan to sit down in. And I also had to add an extra piece on the front to be a little lip and I wanted to do this because that's where you're going to be stepping in and out of the shower and I wanted it to be fully supported from the the uh, wood frame underneath the pan. Another thing I'm running three inch deck screws down in there to hold it down to the floor so it should never come out of the van and you'll notice the drain for the that pan that's in the video right now is at the center or actually not in the center it's to one side and what we found was is that when I measured where that drain was in relation to the bottom of the van, I found that that was in one of the cross members and that it was not going to work. So you'll see the pan that we've got here is got the drain uh, more towards the center of the van and not at one end or the other. And that actually allowed us to get out from under the cross member and have a place where we could drill through the bottom of the van to fit our um, drain. And we ended up putting a P-trap underneath the van. If you're not familiar with that, it's basically a U-shaped uh, pipe. And you find them typically under sinks, but we wanted to put one in our shower. So if there was any dirty, nasty, smelly water in our gray water tank under the van, the smell wouldn't come back up through the pipe. So here I finally got smart and decided to just go ahead and measure a bunch of things and kind of sketch out a rough concept in the red van notebook that maybe one day will turn into a complete van guide. I think for now we're going to focus on some electrical stuff and see if we can get an electrical guide going. But that's a side note. Check our website for InFam for the most up-to-date stuff and you'll see how we're progressing on that side of things. So we've got our framing going in here, basically doing a lot of measuring and test fitting, making sure that the angle in the ceiling is correct kind of cut the video off there, sorry about that, but it fits into the little extra piece that we added up there in the ceiling. And basically just screwing everything together. I didn't want to use nails because I was worried about the wood squeaking over time, and so the deck screws, you can tell they're crazy long when I'm running them in there, and that gives it a little, little more rigidity and kind of pulls everything together nice and tightly. So on this piece, you can see the little notch that I cut out that goes into the back piece on the wall there. And I'm using the the tape, or not the tape, the um, pink string that I pulled and basically checking to make sure that everything is the same distance from the center of the van all the way through and screwing everything together. And then we're going to put the top cross member in and that kind of ties it all up finally. And that's the, the basis for the shower frame doing a little test fit, making sure that uh, we're going to fit inside there. Uh, this is a standard, it's a Lippert component shower pan, so that kind of set the dimensions for what the shower was going to be. I believe it's 30 by 24. So if you're interested in using the same, same shower pan that we used, we'll drop that link in the description below and you can order the one we used. Or you can order the one with the drain in the other place if you have a van that's not a T1N or you're going to put the shower somewhere else. But if you're in a T1N and you want to use a shower, you're 
more than likely going to have to use the shower pan that we use because that's the only one we found with that drain in that location with the size requirements that we had. So we'll definitely drop that link below. Um, doing some more screwing in here, making sure everything's nice and tight. We're going to go ahead and add in some more supports. I did as much of the framing as I could with wood just because I'm more familiar with wood. Later on in the video we're going to get into some metal stud work. Uh, when we do, I'll explain why I use those. But what I'm doing here is taking a measurement basically every six inches. And this is in preparation for cutting the panel that goes right there in the van. Uh, that's basically a plywood wall that is going to uh, be the, the side there. So now we're getting into the metal framing. And initially, I was not going to do metal framing. But I watched a couple videos, uh, especially Sarah and Alex James over at 40 Hours of Freedom. If you are interested in some metal shower work, they've got some pretty pretty detailed stuff that will uh, might make your life a little easier on the metal shower side. But the one thing that I do like about the metal showers or the metal studs is that you can cut them and trim them to fit. And you can see here that's basically what we did, and it kind of contours to the side of the van. Now you do lose a little bit of the structural integrity of the stud when you snip the sides out of it like we did, but with it screwed into the van and screwed into the wood, and I screwed together the gaps when they closed back up, so it added a lot of the strength back into it. Uh, looking back, for the sides of the van that are contoured like that, the metal studs probably do make the most sense. They're, they're a little bit of a pain to work with. You definitely have to wear gloves if you don't. It will just shred your hands, uh, basically just working with razor blades the whole time, pretty much. Um, but I mean, it does it does go together pretty quickly, as you can see. I'm basically going through putting all the screws in, but once you get in a groove, cutting the stuff, like it kind of kind of goes pretty quick, and it it assembles to the van pretty well. Another thing to note that if you if you did if you were to use steel framing for pretty much everything in your van, one thing to think about is during a crash, it will actually crumple, like how a car is designed to do, and will absorb some of the force of the crash. Like with everything being wood framed in our van, if we were ever to get hit by a big truck or something, I would feel sorry for the big truck because our van is all wood and it's not going to give, except for the shower. The shower would crumple and that would be pretty much it. Uh, but another reason that we use the metal studs is initially I was planning to run the plumbing through the walls of the shower and the, with the way the studs are turned sideways I would have to basically cut out an entire uh, wood stud in order to run the half inch pecs through it and I didn't really want to do that and so that's where I was thinking I could just snip a little section out of the steel studs and that would allow me to run the uh, pecs through them. Granted, you'd lose some structural integrity, but it that was kind of my train of thought there. But in the end, I ended up not running the plumbing through the um, wall itself. I just punched through the back of the, the cabinet that butted up to the back of the shower and ran all the pecs through the through the cabinet, which turned out to be a lot easier than trying to run everything through the wall. And it makes it where if we ever have a leak or something, you can always get to the pipes and you don't really have to worry about not being able to work on anything. So you can see here, I'm contouring that back piece to the contour of the van and screwing it into the van, which made it really easy when we came back later with the Schluter board. And in a minute, I'm going to kind of break down some things and talk about how we're going to use hydroband board, but we ended up going with another brand, same type of stuff. It's a foam board called Schluter board, but we'll get more into that later. So working with the metal studs, it's, it's pretty simple. It just takes a pair of tin snips and uh, a lot of patience, but you can pretty much trim them and cut them however you want to and bend them and flex them and they'll fit a lot of places, like this one here going into the, the contours of the van. The way that we chose to frame our van out, we wanted to optimize as much space as we could, so we used the steel structure on the side. I mean, you can see how our wood studs kind of line up with the, the steel that's already in the van. So that was kind of the goal there, and that's why we did the steel studs here, where you could uh, cut sections out of them and flatten them out and still have something to screw your uh, foam board to. One thing to keep in mind, this stuff does make a big mess when you're working with it. 
Uh, there's tons of little metal scraps, and with the dogs running around everywhere, I definitely wanted to vacuum all of those up so we didn't have any puppy paw incidents where we had to take the dogs to the vet and get little strips of uh, galvanized stud removed from their paws. So definitely make sure you clean up after you do all the metal stud work. So the next step was to take all the measurements that we made earlier for our wall and actually turn them into a wall. So I'm going up the sheet of lumber there, marking every increment that I measured. I got them all written down in my notebook, and then we're going to measure across the board the other direction and put a mark at each one of those lengths. And this will basically give us the contour of the van. And this actually turned out working much better than I thought it would. I thought I would have a lot of gaps that I'd have to fill later when I put in the wall around the window, but it actually butted up pretty close to the van contour and I was pretty happy with it. So here we're just going between each point and measuring out, or actually drawing between each point with the uh, level there as a straight edge and then working through the top and then we're going to make the, the cutout with the jigsaw, the handy dandy one that was actually my uh, my grandfather's before he passed away. It's probably definitely older than I am, but uh, still goes through wood like the day it was uh, brand new. So definitely a, a good tool that we've used a lot in the van build. So we're going to get this wall put into the van after we make this final cut with the circular saw here. And then we're going to do a little more in-depth view of what the shower looks like at this point. And putting the panel on, Got a little bit of spackling over the screw holes, cover it up, make it all flat, and make that wall look nice and pretty. We've got our shower framed up. We did a hybrid wood slash metal stud frame that will attach all the hydro band board that we're going to use inside. And the reason that we use the metal like this is because it is flexible if you cut it just right. So that way we can match the contours of the van. So if you look closer at this stud here, you can see where we've cut all but one side of the metal stud and bent it so it matches the contour of the van. And we're also able to trim it out as it came up into the corner so we have a really thin stud. And then the other studs we were able to flatten out partially and attach to the metal substructure of the van in order to give us a place to mount the hydro band board. So the corners where the joints meet will be fully supported on both sides. And then the front we will frame out and the Nautilus shower door will span between the two 2x4s which we will face with some better looking lumber and the top frame is all wood as well. The other thing that we did in order to save space is we turned the studs sideways. So in a normal house when you frame a wall the studs are turned the opposite of how we have them turned here which gives you a three and a half inch wall instead of a one and a half inch thick wall. But we wanted to save space, so we chose to turn them sideways. All right, so jumping back in here, it's time to get the wall finished up here, sanded down, basically smoothing out all the spackling that we put on to cover up the screw holes. And this was a very long, tedious process, as with sanding anything, basically making sure that everything's as flat as possible. So when we put a coat of primer on it, we won't have any surprises that we have to sand again, which I think we ended up having to sand a couple things again, but overall wall turned out pretty good and we're happy with what it looks like. One thing to note with spackling is make sure you get a spackling that's really flexible and is resistant to moisture because in a van it's basically outside all the time, so the moisture content's going to be changing all the time and if the spackling heats up and expands or gets moisture in it and moves, it's going to create basically like what a nail pop is in sheetrock. You'll kind of see it later on when you, uh, after the build is over, been, been used for a couple months, you'll kind of start to see it. One thing that you can do to try to combat that is use a good primer on everything. So we use Sherwin-Williams primer everywhere in the van. You can see we're rolling it on here. Our wall here, it ended up being white when we were done with the van but we primed white for the white paint anyways so fast forward a lot here basically the shower sat in the stage where we just saw it there for a really long time uh, <laughs> and we completed a lot of projects before jumping back into it 
So what we're doing here is getting the Schluter board cut to go in the van. And it's, it's basically it's a foam board, a half inch thick, really easy to work with. We're uh, test fitting it, figuring out where the seams need to be. So basically you just stick the whole sheet in there, mark where it needs to bend, and then you take it back out and score it with a razor blade on one end, and the other side just kind of bends into place. And later you come back and seal all of those seams. Uh, so what we're doing here, I'm measuring where all of the studs are located in the back of the van so I can kind of mark out on the wall where we can actually screw stuff in. So the Schluter board attaches with screws and big washers and that's how you run it into the studs that are in the van. Next thing that we're doing here is a very important step if you ask us. Um, what we're doing is taking flashing tape and basically lining the bottom of the wall with it where the shower pan meets the wall. And this is just an extra precautionary step that we chose to take and basically it increases the waterproofing of the shower. It, it makes it harder for water to get behind the wall because the last thing you want is when you use your shower for water to seep behind the wall somehow and then get in the van and then it never dries and then mold grows and then you have a moldy van and you get sick because there's mold and just this long thing of mold so put some flashing tape down and avoid a moldy van. Uh, it's a little tip that we picked up along the way we decided we were going to do it because the roll of flashing tape was like three bucks. So in our shower we chose to do a Lippert component shower pan with a center drain and the reason being is that we needed it to fit in our van. Effectively the only pan that would fit is that one right there because of where the frame rail is located in the van. Any other pan that you try to use with the drain like either in the left side or the right side it will be right on top of the frame rail and we can't do that because we cannot drill through it for a hole for the drain. Um, so moving from the drain pan up, we took flashing tape and went up about three rows high with it. And that's just as an extra vapor barrier. And we did that all the way around the entire shower pan. Uh, we are also sealing the uh, Schluter board to the pan with the Curtibon sealant that it uh, is recommended to use with it. But we just wanted that extra layer of protection in that 3M... Uh, weather barrier tape and so we chose to do that it's not something that you have to do but the tape only costs a few bucks and it'll definitely save you a lot of heartaches later on down the road so moving on to our Schluter board uh, that's what our local tile place recommended actually I walked in there and I actually showed the guy the van he came out into the parking lot and took a look at everything he's like I've got just the stuff for you and what he recommended is this stuff right here, and it's called Schluter board. It's basically a half inch foam board that's got a cloth backing on either side. Um, it's very easy to work with. You can cut it with a utility knife. Uh, the other thing that's really cool about it is like, you can't really tell from the video, but like where this big tape seam is right there, there's actually a contour in the shower. And so that's, there's an angle change right there and it goes and then comes down and then there's another one about halfway down. Because I'm sure, as you're well aware, vans are not square like houses are. But the cool thing about this board is, in order to make those bends, you don't have to cut a whole new sheet. You just take one sheet, and you take the razor blade, and you just score along it all the way across, and cut through basically one of the, um, the little pieces there, and let the rest just bend. And what that does is that maintains your waterproofing barrier and gives you a little bit of flexibility. So then on top of that, we put the strips, uh, I think they're called Curdy Band, and we use the, the Curdy Bond sealant with it and put those on to waterproof all of our seams. And now all these little holes right here that you see, those are the screws and washers that we use to attach it to our framing that was behind the van. Now it's recommended with this system right here, you have a fastener every 12 inches approximately. Um, with half inch board, you can I've done a little bit of research and you can get away with uh, 16 inch centers, which is what's standard in a house. So basically every 12 inches on 16 inch centers is where you need a fastener. So that's kind of how we have our shower stud framework laid out. So 
We've got our other two pieces cut here. That one's got the hole for the mixing valve and the hole for the um, shower nozzle. I messed up a little bit there, but luckily with the Curdy Band and the Curdy Bond sealant, you can just pretty much slather that stuff in there and fix almost any hole and just put the tape over it and be good to go. So that's a, uh, a real quick rundown of our shower installation. And we're also gonna do um, the ceiling with the Curdy Band board and probably put some FRP board on the top and use that as a white ceiling. Now, in order to finish the shower, we're going to use stick-on tile. Uh, we've got those in, st our, in our garage now. We ordered them from Amazon. We'll be sure to put the link to those below if you want to get the same type of tiles that we got. Um, don't think you can order Schluter board off of Amazon, but if you can, I'll put a link to that. I highly doubt you can. I would really suggest going to your local tile shop and just asking what they would use because there you're going to find the most useful information. The Schluter board is actually designed to mount tile to. So that's we also used it behind the backsplash in our van where we, we did use real tile instead of the stick on tile. So it's kind of got like a, a fuzz basically on the, the two sides that will allow the mortar to bond to it. But basically you can kind of see here how the Curdy Bond sealant goes on. You just spread it out with a putty knife and then put the Curdy Band over it to completely waterproof every seam. So basically everywhere that we put a slit and bent the board, we also like double waterproofed it with a seam. And then every nail or screw hole with a washer, we put Curdy Band and Curdy Bond on that as well to completely seal that. And then the next place that we went with the Curdy band and Curdy bond was the corners of the shower. So pretty much all of the orange that you see once all the Curdy bonds set up is all completely waterproof. Like we could have stopped right there and our shower could have just been orange and white and it would have been perfectly fine. There would have been no water coming through. It just wouldn't have looked the best. Um, this stuff, I think we ended up using like five or six tubes of the Curdy bond stuff all in all. We were pretty liberal with it. We didn't really uh, want to conserve too much of it. We just really wanted the shower to be waterproof and not to have to worry about it later. So definitely went through a bunch of tubes of that, spreading it out everywhere, getting all the nail holes and all the seams. Uh, definitely helps to have two people for this stuff because it's uh, really kind of not really hard to work with. It's just you really, it gets everywhere and... Uh, it's helpful to be able to bend it in the cracks and corners the way that you need to with two people and one person spreads and the other person basically dispenses all of the the curdy bond so big shout out to Lauren's dad who came and helped with that and then my dad here who came and helped we couldn't have, couldn't have done it without you guys helping us out um, we're getting the around the opening for the shower nozzle kind of fixed up there. That's one area where I, I cut the hole too big, so we had to fill it in with a lot of curdy band. Uh, but basically you just goop it in there and you're good to go. So getting into the corners here, tons and tons of the, <laughs> the curdy bond sealant in there. Probably a little bit overkill, but definitely didn't want any shower leaks. Definitely don't think we're ever going to have any. Uh, the, sh the shower's probably like the most well insulated part of the van because it's got the spray foam and all the Curdy Bond and uh, Schluter board stuff in there. So now we're getting to the part where we installed the Tic Tac tiles. And just a little background on where we are in the van build right now. So this is about, I think, two days before we had to leave to go across the country to move to Fresno, California from South Carolina. So uh, we're kind of in a, a, a bind and I kind of rushed the, the tile installation here. And you can see uh, now I'm starting to use black Sharpie lines across the top as a guide, but I messed up and didn't really do that on the first couple ones. So the gaps were kind of uneven and it ended up being a little bit crooked. So it's definitely not my proudest work. At some point we'll probably take all of this out and if we weigh the van and can use real tile, we probably will put real tile in. But for now, the Tic Tac tiles, they get the job done. 
I, I don't know if I would use them in another van. Uh, I mean, they, they kind of look okay, but it's, it's probably like my least proud part of the van. I would definitely do it differently the next time myself, but hey, if you like stick-on tiles that are pretty easy to install and don't really take a lot of time and they're actually pretty cheap, then these might be the way for you to go. They definitely work. I mean, we've showered in the van multiple times now and everything seems to be to be going all right. And we actually used them in the ceiling of the shower as well. And we just went all the way up and around with it. Just had to cut out for the contours of the van. So here, putting on the cover for the mixing valve. And that's one thing in this video, there's no shots of the actual plumbing itself. So if you want to see that, stick around. I think the next van build episode, we're going to go into plumbing. So uh, two weeks from now, you'll see the, the entire plumbing system in the van, and we'll go into greater detail there about that. So here, we're knocking out the face frame for the shower and basically just doing the same uh, deal that we did on all of our other face frames, which was using the Craig jig to put Craig holes in it and getting it all together. So putting it on the shower and we're gonna clamp it to the cabinets to get it nice and square. And then I actually had to put a couple of shims in behind the shower frame because the cabinets were not perfectly square with the shower and I really wanted them to line up. So I split the difference behind the uh, shower face frame. And you can kind of see, you can't really tell in the video, but the shower face frame slides up into that nice little gap that I left in the ceiling. Uh, that I talked about in the previous episode where we did the, the fan, the AC, and the shiplap on the ceiling. So if you're curious in those, make sure you check out those videos and uh, you'll get that knowledge of how we installed all those things in our van. So using a little wood glue, some clamps, and coming back with the brad nailer to nail the face frame on after we put all the little spacers in. And that's pretty much how we did the face frame on the shower. So if you made it this far in the video, we're about to uh, show you the finished product of the shower and Lauren's going to walk you through all the features that it's got. The van bathroom is very small, but very efficient. <laughs> <laughs> we got Vanna White in our bathroom. She's going to give you a quick little tour here. That's not funny. <laughs> um, yeah, needs some work but this is pretty much the greatest shower head ever. Um, very easy, kind of hose yourself down in a controlled manner, which I think is necessary because it's very small. And then it clips right in. And then we have our toilet, which has been really nice. Um, I thought everyone was being dramatic when they said that they only pee in their toilets, but we've really made an effort to only do that. And even that alone is kind of hard to keep up with with dumping. So, but it's been a really great toilet and it's one of your cheaper options. And then we just usually remove it when we shower. We play like shower Tetris and just chuck that, it back in here after. That's the only thing that we move in our van when we need to use it. And even it's not really when we need to use it, it's just when you need to take a shower. Yes, because we talked about that we really wanted everything fixed, that we didn't want to set anything up. So this is the only thing that gets moved around and quite honestly, we don't have to, we just do. I mean, you could stand right here, but most of the time we kind of stand sideways instead of here. So it's waterproof, it could stay. Um, we just choose not to, so. Yes, our little tiny shower. Eventually we might put a door here, but we ran out of time um, pushing to get to California from South Carolina. So for now we have our cheap little target curtain and it does the job. 